As you saw in the video, it finally runs. The issue was that my squeeze gap was way too big. Now I removed all the hack gaskets and now it runs fine. But it runs very lean. I have a 24mm carb with an 110 ma main jet, I think. Now it runs too lean. At first I thought the carbs are way too big, but the issue was that my squish gap was way too big. The spark plug looked very wet and I thought the carbs were too big. But now with the correct squish gap the carb size is very well proportioned. I also uploaded a few videos on my Instagram. I highly recommend my Instagram stories to be up to date and not like YouTube. It has one two months of delay from the videos because it takes a lot of time to cut them properly. As you hear, it sounds like a mini skido, which is good. That means that the ignition works very well and also my crankshaft does work very well because the angles and the way it's built is correctly. The next step is that I have to remove all of the cylinders and turning it down to remain the same squish cap that I have now, but with a head gasket installed because right now I don't have any head gasket installed. And I also want to put in a sealer in the exhaust to prevent this from happening. The next issue is the clutch got very loose after this one or two runs, because in here, uh, as you saw in my drive shaft video, there are two shafts and in the middle is a ball and that's functions as a bearing. That's the original way it is China doll engines work, but with uh, two springs installed and with this power this system doesn't work very long. So my idea is now to remove this cover and engineer a complete new billet uh, cover for this and with a bearing like this. This is an RGM made piece but I want to make it my own style. This is RGM and mine will work similar to this one. But with the difference that my bearing I want to use are a little bit bigger. So I have to disassemble it now and engineer a new clutch actuator with a bearing. So that the load are not longer pushed on the middle shaft in the drive shaft. Now I want to remove the first uh, cylinder head and put in a wire to measure the squish gap. Because I don't know how much squish gap I'm running now. And also uh, changing the needles uh, or changing the main sheds of the carbs is very simple because it's, it's right here and it's very easy access to, to all of it. And also changing the position of the needle is also very easy. When you are measuring the squish gap, make sure you put the wire in this direction where the piston pin is, not in this position because the piston wobbles here a little bit because it's supported in this direction, not in this direction. Here you can see I have a squish gap of 0.5 mm. This is definitely too less. My goal is to have a squish gap of 0.8 mm. So I have to calculate how much I turn down the cylinders. I also had the idea of putting an O-ring in here to get rid of the head gasket just to run with an O-ring. But the problem is to find the correct O-ring to fit with the uh, studs and the cylinder. There are a lot of different O-rings and to find the perfect one turn down the cylinder is less work to find the perfect o-ring to fit in here. So I just go with this solution.
As you saw, I just removed the engine. Uh, it took about 20 minutes. Everything is so designed and engineered to make it as easy and fast as possible to remove it. This is the reason why my clutch got very loose. You can see here the clutch lever is really digging in into the material. I have to say this is not an hardened steel, it's just a steel that was lying around in my workshop that I machined down to the diameter I needed it. The parts are now finished. I have worked on the parts a little bit on my lathe so that it fits perfectly. This is the other part. This goes onto here. And this part goes into here. I measured when you pull the clutch, this pin is a 3mm pushed inside the drive shaft. So I put a spacer in here, so I can measure the cover, how thick it must be and what my spacing is between the individual parts. The development of my clutch actuating system is now finished. This is now the final prototype. This is going to be mounted onto here. I have extended the case to the maximum that is possible to fit in between the two engines. I also made two holes in here for these two bolts. This was my first prototype. This is just a rough idea. So I get the measurements and how everything is supposed to look. And on my second prototype I had the idea to extend the housing till the next engine. Then I came up with this design. This is very close to the final design, but the most challenging thing was to have the right start spacing. On these prototypes I draw how much millimeter I have to move the holes to have the same start spacing as I have on the engine. This was the most challenging part on these prototypes. As you saw, I made three of them to have the correct start spacing. And now this is the final design. At the earlier prototypes I had this shaft at 10 millimeters, but this was not rigid enough, so I went with 15 millimeters. As you see in the final prototype, so I had to make this part a little thicker to remain higher wall thickness, so this is not too flimsy. And I also looked that this part have as less weight as possible, so I have grooves in here. I also had a few design with the lever. This was the first design, I didn't like it at all. Then this was the second. Here was the bend nut enough and this is now the final design how it's supposed to look. It took about two weeks for the prototyping, not just this part, also uh, for the brake caliper bracket.